My weird school. Fast facts. Dinosaurs, dodos, and woolly mammoths. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pilot. Chapter three. Kinds of dinosaurs. In this chapter, Arlo and I are going to talk about the incredible variety of dinosaurs. Sometimes they were classified according to their diet. Arlo, do you know how we know what dinosaurs ate? Sure, we dug up their old restaurant menus. Very funny. The truth is, there are a few ways to tell. One way is to look at dinosaur teeth. That can tell us what they ate, how they got their food, and even whether they chewed it, crushed it, or just wolfed it down. Most of the dinosaurs were plant eaters, or herbivores. They had large, flat teeth that could strip the leaves off trees and grind up plants. They probably ate twigs and seeds too. Some scientists think they ate stones also to help them digest their food. Wait, scientists ate stones? No, the herbivores ate stones. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. It would be weird if scientists ate stones. Then there were the meat eaters. Or carnivores like Tyrannosaurus rex and Velociraptor, they had long, sharp, pointy, serrated teeth that were perfect for ripping flesh and crunching the bones of other dinosaurs and biting their heads off. I'm not sure they did that. Actually, the carnivores were not necessarily hunters. Some scientists believe they were scavengers. They'd eat the flesh of dinosaurs that died. Wait, scientists would eat the flesh of dinosaurs that died? No, the carnivores would eat the flesh of dinosaurs that died. Oh, that's a relief. It would be weird if scientists ate dead dinosaurs. Then, of course, there were the omnivores. Like Cetipodi and Nomingia, they would eat plants, animals, insects, whatever. They would eat anything, sort of like Ryan. But the point is that some dinosaurs were meat eaters, some were plant eaters, and some ate nothing but Pringles. Okay, I made that last one up. How did they name the dinosaurs? The first dinosaur to get a name was Megalosaurus, which means great lizard. It was named in 1824 by a British theologian named William Buckland. Since that time, hundreds of dinosaurs have been named, usually by the person who discovered the bones or the paleontologist who figured out that they were from a dinosaur that wasn't discovered before. Some prehistoric creatures were named after famous people. A 50-ton whale named Leviathan Melville was named after Herman Melville, the guy who wrote the novel Moby Dick. Ephigia O'Keefe was named after the painter Georgia O'Keefe. Diplodocus Carnegie was named after Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest men in the world. He was the person who donated money to pay for the expedition that discovered the new dinosaur. Two American presidents have had prehistoric creatures named after them. There's a lizard named after Barack Obama and a plant-eating ground sloth named after Thomas Jefferson. A bunch of dinosaurs were named after musicians. Agrotocatellus jaggery was named after Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones. Barbatrix morrisoni was named after Jim Morrison of the Doors. Mashikasaurus knopfleri was named after Mark Knopfler of the band Dire Straits. Scientists must really like Lady Gaga.
She has had a genus of ferns named after her, a species of wasp, and a small hoofed mammal that lived over fifty million years ago. That means Lady Gaga toothed mini monster. Here's a trivia question that will stump your parents. Guess who Tiantisaurus netagopferma was named after? Give up? It was named for the cast of the movie Jurassic Park. Some dinosaurs were named after the place where they were discovered. Euraptor and Denverosaurus were obviously named for Euda and Denver. Albertosaurus was found in Alberta, Canada. Arctosaurus was found near the Arctic Circle. Some dinosaurs got their name because of the way they looked. Triceratops means a three-horned head. Iguanodon has teeth like an iguana. Here are some other dinosaur names and their meanings. Name and meaning. Apatosaurus, deceptive lizard. Iguanodon, iguana tooth. Tyrannosaurus, tyrant lizard. Velociraptor, quick plunderer. How smart were the dinosaurs? Were dinosaurs smart, or were they a bunch of dumbheads? It's really hard to say because dinosaurs aren't around for us to give them IQ tests, and even if they were around, they wouldn't be able to hold a pencil. So all we can do is guess. If you look inside a dinosaur skull. You'll see that some of them had big brains, while others had small ones. Stegosaurus had a brain the size of a large walnut, so it must have been a real dope. You figure that an animal with a big brain would be smarter than an animal with a small brain, right? Look at me and Andrea. Obviously, I have a large brain, while Andrea's is about the size of a pea. So. Paleontologists would call Andrea Pebrainosaurus. Very funny, Arlo. But let's be serious. With humans, most of what's inside our skull is our brain. But with dinosaurs, most of what was inside their skull was their jaw structure, powerful biting muscles. When scientists try to figure out which dinosaurs were the smartest. They look at the size of the brain in relation to the overall size of the dinosaur. Then they compare that to other animals that are about the same size. Plant eaters like the sauropods, ankylosaurs, and stegosaurs were probably the least intelligent dinosaurs. Meat eaters, which had to hunt and chase their prey, are thought to have been more intelligent. The smartest dinosaurs were probably the theropods, Velociraptor and Tudon, which are related to today's birds. Thank you for that explanation, P. Brainosaurus. The biggest and smallest dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were a lot like shoes, don't you think? Why do you say that, Arlo? They came in all different sizes, like shoes. Hmm. I guess I can't argue with that. In general, plant-eating dinosaurs were bigger than meat eaters. T. Rex and Gigantosaurus, among the biggest meat eaters, were forty-five feet long and weighed seven or eight tons. But some plant-eating dinosaurs weighed a hundred tons. Wow, they should have gone on Weight Watchers. It worked for my mom. I heard that Triceratops was as big as a house. Actually, it was more like the size of a garbage chuck, about twenty feet long. The biggest dinosaur was probably the Patagotitan Mayordom. It was discovered in Argentina in two thousand and eight. Scientists estimate a complete Patagotitan. Would have been over one hundred twenty feet long. The dinosaur with the biggest head was Tortosaurus. Its skull was eight feet long, and the world's biggest dinosaur footprint was discovered recently in Australia. 
It was almost six feet long. Bigfoot. The smallest dinosaur was Lesuthosaurus. It was about the size of a big chicken. I bet it was adorable. The smallest raptor was called Microraptor. It was about two feet from head to tail, and it ate insects. If you ask an evolutionary biologist, the dinosaurs never really died out. They just evolved into birds. So if that's true, the smallest dinosaur is a hummingbird. Some hummingbirds weigh about as much as a penny. The fastest and slowest dinosaurs. Back in prehistoric times, they had dinosaur races. They were kind of like horse races around a big track. The dinosaurs that were not racing would bet on which dinosaurs would win the race. Arlo, you made that up, and you know it. Okay, okay, but dinosaur races would have been cool. The truth is, scientists use computer models to estimate how fast or slow dinosaurs moved. They look at footprints, the distance between strides, the shape of the foot, and the estimated leg length based on the type of dinosaur. From that, they figured out that the slowest dinosaurs were probably the sauropodomorphs. These were huge herbivores with short legs. They didn't need to run after food because plants pretty much stay in one place, right? And because they were so big, predators didn't bother them. They moved about three miles an hour, which is about the same speed that humans walk. Unless we're having a bathroom emergency, of course, then we walk a lot faster. I'll just ignore that. Next slowest were stegosaurs and the ankylosaurs. They moved three or four miles an hour. It would have been hard to go faster than that because of their heavily armored bodies and club-like tails. The fastest dinosaurs were probably the small carnivores that had long limbs and light bodies. Ornithomimus could run forty-three miles an hour. That's way faster than the fastest human can run, about twenty-five miles an hour. So that means if we ever find a way to clone Ornithomimus and bring it back to life, it would chase us down the street and bite our heads off. What did dinosaurs sound like? Here's a fun fast fact: as far as we know, dinosaurs didn't have ears on their heads. It's true. So how did they hear? Well, paleontologists believe they had ears inside their heads, like birds. Wait, paleontologists have ears inside their heads? You know what I mean, Arlo. Most animals make noises, and there's no reason to think dinosaurs are any different. They probably make sounds to call for a mate and to signal that there was danger or that they were hurt. We don't know for sure what dinosaurs sounded like. Scientists have made digital scans of dinosaur skulls and blown virtual air through them to figure out what sounds those dinosaurs make. Some scientists don't think dinosaurs roared at all. In 2016, a team of researchers studied the sounds of two groups of animals alive today that are most like dinosaurs. Birds and crocodiles. They concluded that some dinosaurs made more of a mumbling or cooing sound. That would have made them even more adorable. Dangerous, deadly, diabolical dinosaurs. I'll take this one, Andrea. While some dinosaurs wouldn't hurt a fly, there were other dinosaurs that you definitely wouldn't want to mess with. If they were around today, these would be on my most wanted list. Argentinosaurus. It weighed a hundred tons. Some of its vertebrae were six feet tall. If it couldn't sit on you, it would flick its long whip-like tail to rip your head off. Eudoraptor. This raptor had long curved claws that could slice you in half like a piece of cheese. Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
old and reliable. As much as nine tons of pure muscle, it had sharp eyesight, so it could hunt you down and bite your head off with seven thousand eight hundred pounds of force. Stegosaurus. It was slow and dopey, but it had that spike tail called a thagomizer. When it whipped that baby around, it could break a leg, knock out a few teeth, or bash in the skull of a hungry allosaur. Majungasaurus. Some of their bones have the tooth marks of other Majungasaurus on them. You know what that means? They were cannibals. That must have made Thanksgiving dinner interesting. Chudan. This wimpy dino had feathers and weighed only about a hundred and fifty pounds. But while it was small, it had serrated teeth, a big brain, and big eyes. And it used to team up and travel in packs at night to gang up on other dinosaurs. Could dinosaurs fly? You've probably heard of pterodactyls. They were first described in 1784 by the Italian scientist Cosimo Colony. He thought the creature's wings were used to paddle in the water, but pterodactyls could actually fly. The thing is, pterodactyls weren't dinosaurs; they were flying reptiles. They lived at about the same time as dinosaurs, and even went extinct around the same time. But they were not flying dinosaurs. The remains of a few flying dinosaurs have been found. In 2007, a fossil was discovered in China that was the size of a pigeon. It was named Ichi for strange wing. Ichi had long fingers. Scientists believe these dinosaurs had a skin between their fingers that enabled them to glide like bats. There are also a few other small, light feathered dinosaurs in the same family as Yichi. They're called Scansoriopterygids. Could dinosaurs swim? Back in prehistoric times, there were books with pictures of huge dinosaurs like Apatosaurus and Diplodocus swimming in swamps and lakes. In those days, scientists believed their bodies were so big. That their legs couldn't support their weight on land. The scientists were so big that their legs couldn't support their weight on land. Not the scientists, Arlo. The dinosaurs. Oh, why didn't you say so? Anyway, the theory was wrong. A scientist named K. A. Carmack. Found that water pressure would have crushed the thorax of an underwater dinosaur and cut off its air supply. Out! That's gotta hurt. Most dinosaurs were land animals. When they find a dinosaur skeleton at the bottom of a lake, that doesn't mean the dinosaur lived or died there. It could have been moved there by a predator or a landslide. But most land animals can swim at least a little if they fall into water, so some dinosaurs probably could too. In 1912, a fossil was dug up in the Egyptian desert, Spinosaurus aegyptiacus. It was as long as a bus and heavier than an elephant. It had flat paddle-like feet, a seven-foot sail on its back, and nostrils on top of its crocodile-like head. That would allow it to submerge under water. Scientists believe Spinosaurus is the first known dinosaur adapted for swimming. So I guess the answer is yes. Some dinosaurs could swim, but it's not like they would be able to pass a life-saving test or anything. I have a question: Could dinosaurs play musical instruments? No. Why would you even ask a silly question like that? That doesn't make any sense at all. Well, some dinosaurs can fly, right? And it seems to me that it's a lot easier to play a musical instrument than it is to fly. My sister Amy can play the piano really well, but she can't fly at all. So it makes perfect sense for dinosaurs to play musical instruments.
I think it would be cool to see a dinosaur playing a tuba. You're weird, Arlo. I'll tell you one thing that I know all dinosaurs could do. What? Poop. Arlo, we're not going to talk about dinosaur poop. That's off limits. You're no fun.